The widow of slain Army Sergeant LaDavid Johnson spoke out for the first time yesterday on ABC's Good Morning America, telling anchor George Stephanopoulos about the condolence calls she received from Donald Trump the day her husband's body was brought back to Florida last week. Here is some of that exclusive interview. The president said that he knew what he signed up for, but it hurts anyways. And I was, it made me cry because I was very angry at the, the tone of his voice and how he said it. Like he, he, he couldn't remember my husband's name. The only way he remembered my husband's name because he told me he had my husband report in front of him. And that's when he actually said, La David. I heard him stumbling on trying to remember my husband's name. And that will hurt me the most because if my husband is out here fighting for our country and he risks his life for our country, why can't you remember his name? And that will make me upset and cry even more because my husband was an awesome soldier. Maisha Johnson's account confirms Florida Congresswoman Frederica Wilson's description of the phone conversation she shared publicly that sparked a firestorm between Wilson and the White House. Whatever Ms. Wilson said was not fabricated. What she said was 100% correct. It was Master Sergeant Neal, me, my aunt, my uncle, and the driver, and Ms. Wilson in a car. The phone was on speakerphone. Why would we fabricate something like that? But Trump again contradicted her, their account yesterday, tweeting, I had a very respectful conversation with the widow of Sergeant LaDavid Johnson and spoke his name from the beginning without hesitation. Johnson is expecting their third child in January, wants answers from the military, including why her husband was left behind after the ambush in Niger on October 4th that killed Johnson and three others. When they came to my house, they just told me that, um, it was a massive gunfire, and my husband, as of October 4th, was missing. They didn't know his whereabouts. They didn't know where he was or where to find him. And a couple of days later is when they told me that he went from mi missing to killed in action. I don't know how he got killed, where he got killed, or anything. I don't know that part. They never told me, and that's what I've been trying to find out since day one since October 4th. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff admitted yesterday that they have more questions than answers at this moment. We owe the families that have fallen more information and that's what the investigation is, is designed to identify. But I can assure you that if Mrs. Johnson or any of the families of the fallen are unsatisfied with the support that they've had to date or have additional questions, we're going to go to every last length to try to satisfy their concerns or answer their Back questions. Both my shoulders. Now, folks, ever since, ever since Congresswoman Wilson publicly shared Trump's comments to the family of Sergeant Johnson, she's been receiving threats, including racially charged calls to have her lynched. She's also been criticized on social media and other platforms, including on KFI Radio in Los Angeles, where, a, where the top morning uh, uh, talk show host there uh, said something about her that is absolutely stunning. This took place on Friday, and the host is Bill Handel. And this is where Handel is talking with a political strategist about Congresswoman Wilson. It was a Democratic congresswoman, by the way, the same congresswoman who didn't refuse to attend oh, Trump's yeah, inauguration. No, no, no. She's, who, uh, she, look, she overheard that conversation and she got, oh, this is great. I will score political points by picking, going on MSNBC and becoming somebody. Right. That bill is disgusting. Yeah, it's totally disgusting. Uh, and I, I'm far more upset with her because that is a cheap you know, what in the affectation. World? I mean, it's just, she's a cheap, sleazy uh, Democrat whore is what she is. Okay. Oh, Whoa. no, excuse me. I'm being too generous to her. Uh, I would say she's a sleazy politician. But yeah, it, I, I mean, Oh, I would we, add the word uh, whore. Uh, and there's uh, a few uh, other words uh, I can throw uh, in uh, there, but I want to stay working here. <laughs> 
Now, of course, social media went crazy yesterday when this was actually uh, publicized uh, by journalist Jasmine Koenig. Now, Handel addressed the issue again, but did not apologize and instead qualified what he says he should have called Congresswoman Wilson. In reference to uh, me calling uh, Representative Wilson a whore, what I should have done is said media whore. That's it. I, and, and just for the record, incidentally, let me tell you who I've called a whore. Bill Clinton. Certainly Gloria Allred I've called a media whore. I've called myself a whore in making fun of how many commercials I do. I simply bandy that word around. Now, it turns out that Representative Wilson is black and a black woman, and some reference is made to me talking about the fact that she's, well, I didn't mention she was black. It never occurred to me that it was a race issue. She's a representative, a congresswoman who wears these stupid ass cowboy hats for whatever point, nothing political, simply, I guess, to make her point, so she can be seen a whole lot, which makes her a media. Well, I don't even want to get into that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to put that on the record, okay? Joining us via Skype from L.A. is Jasmine Kane, the journalist who actually uh, uncovered that particular audio. So, so, Jasmine, here's what's interesting. First of all, you have Handel with explanation, and right. you listen to him trashing the hat that she's wearing. First of all, Anybody with a brain who can Google will realize that Congresswoman Wilson wears that, that, that that's her traditional hat. She's worn signature. for years uh, as signature as a part of remembering her late grandmother. Uh, but so you, you got to handle who's pretty stupid about that. But then again, I don't hear him trashing David Clark, who wears his big cowboy hat whenever he's on television. So how is this playing in Los Angeles? And what is KFI saying about him calling the congresswoman a whore? Well, I'll take the latter first. KFI is saying nothing as of right now. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see what happens over the next couple of days, given everything that's happened with Jamel Hill, with, which um, what has happened with that station in the past. Remember, Roland, this is the same station where two of their hosts um, called Whitney Houston uh, shortly after she passed away. Um, a crack hoe, and they were suspended for a week for making that comment. I think that um, when you can't, you can disagree with Representative Wilson all you want. Look, I'm a listener of the Bill Handel shows. I understand, um, I, I sometimes understand his idiotic humor, but when you have to resort to like personal name calling, that's absolutely ridiculous. And then when you get called on it, when you double down on it and then insult the woman again, look, if you don't like Representative Wilson, there are a million words in the English vocabulary you can choose to use to describe her. But using that word um, is inflammatory. It's uh, it defames her, and it it is also hurtful. You know, black women are under attack everywhere. He says he that he didn't think about the fact that she was black. Phil Handel knows that Representative Wilson is black. This station, you know, has a history of making um, questionable comments when it comes to African Americans. And people always say to me, "Well, why do you listen, Jasmine? Look, I'm into talk radio. I work in talk radio, and everybody can't listen to the choir. So some people need to be listening to what fools like Bill Handel are saying, or else no one would know. Because you have to remember, this happened on Friday. No one said anything until yesterday. Right. <laughs> so, and I know so, I'm the so... only listener of the Bill Handel show. Uh, so are we so are we expecting uh, that'll be protest? Are we expecting uh, folks to uh, to speak out further on this? I, I you know, hopefully people will, you know, I hope people take the time to listen to the audio, reach out to the station, let them know how they feel. I feel at you know, I feel as a journalist, I've done my part, right? So I've brought it to the people. and it's up to the people to figure out, are we going to stand for this? Is this something that, that we want to deal with? Um, is this someone that we want to have on the air in Politically Correct America 2017? Is this appropriate? Had he made those comments about one of the women making allegations against Harvey Weinstein, do you think he would still be on the air today? Probably not. So, we saw, so Jasmine, we saw 
Uh, the women of the Congressional Black Caucus released a letter a couple of days ago demanding an apology from John Kelly. Mm -hmm. Have you heard the white women in Congress step up, Democrats or Republicans, no. and blast Handel? Have you heard uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein? Have you heard, um, mm -hmm. uh, have you heard Senator Kamala Harris them specifically call out Handel for his no. comments about a fellow woman in Congress? No, I haven't, and that's very troubling. I know I sent out a tweet yesterday saying that I'm going to need my white women allies to jump on this. Um, Tom Perez, with the D obviously the chair chairman of the DNC, um, did put out a, a one-sentence statement. But I think that, again, how many black women are registered Democrats in this country? Every woman should be... Um, insulted by what Bill Handel said. We can't only get insulted, and the world can't only stop when white women are insulted, when black women are insulted. Everyone needs to act accordingly. So all of the folks that you mentioned and everyone else should have something to say about this. All right, Jasmine Koenig, so appreciate it. Thanks a lot uh, for bringing this Thanks. to our attention. Thank you. Let's go to our panel there in D.C., Tiffany Lofton, civil and labor union organizer, George Farrell, founder of the conservative Black Pack and author of Success is Colorblind, and Dr. Avis Jones-Deweaver, leadership strategist and author of How Exceptional Black Women Lead. What we're seeing, Avis, we're seeing these attacks uh, on black women. Uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters yesterday made a comment about how Donald Trump has this affinity for attacking women and minorities. Absolutely, and we've seen a long line of this administration, everyone from uh, April Ryan uh, to Congresswoman Waters herself and now to Congresswoman Wilson. Uh, it is a habitual thing uh, that, and that's, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, quite frankly. It's a habitual thing that this administration attacks with vehemence, with lies, and with personal insults black women. And it's something that not just other black women and other women should be held, uh, should be mad about or do something about. Quite frankly, I would like to see a statement from the full congressional black caucus. I would like to see black men stand up for black women and say this is not right and we will not stand for it and we demand an apology and for this particular incident we demand, we demand that this man gets fired and gets taken off of that radio show. Tiffany? Yeah, uh, Roland, I agree with the, my former panelists and um, colleagues and also Jasmine and Dr. Avis in their comments. Here's what I want to make clear to white people in America in 2017. You are no longer allowed to pretend like you do not know that you are talking about race. You are no longer allowed to pretend like your comments are not racist and play the okie doke after you say your comments multiple times. Bill O'Reilly was not able to do it when he talked about Congresswoman Maxine Waters and the James Brown wig. And now Bill is not allowed to do this right now about the former Congress, Congresswoman Williams. It is not okay to pretend like you do not know you're talking about race. You are absolutely talking about race. You knew this was a black woman. You know that you called her a whore on public radio and you knew you were gonna get caught. Number two, white people, you are also called to make sure that you respond to instances like this so that black folks don't have to do it every time. We should not have been waiting from February until, um, from Friday, excuse me, until now to find out that this had took place. There are other white channels, there are other white news commentators who could have called this out. It is not our responsibility every time. And we definitely need to make sure that as we're talking about white supremacy and as we're leading into 2018, that this no longer becomes the norm. George, uh, you saw Maisha Johnson yesterday. Uh, uh, make perfectly clear that 100% of what Congresswoman Frederica Wilson had to say was correct. That's why won't this president, who's your party, why won't he apologize? Just simply man up, pick the phone up, and apologize to her. Why won't John Kelly publicly apologize for lying on Congresswoman Wilson now that the Florida Sun's sitting to unveil that video? which details what she said at that ceremony in 2015 in Miami was correct. What is it about this administration where they refuse to acknowledge when they lie on people and hurt people? Well, let me say this. Con Congresswoman uh, Wilson, Congressman Frederica Wilson, does a great job for her, her community. She's been reelected four times. I have no problem with her. She does a great job representing that, that particular area. But I won't stand by and let black women be disrespected. Uh, I've made this point before with former Lieutenant Governor Jennifer Carroll. She deserves an apology from Rick Scott, the governor of Florida. This woman deserves an apology. But what this points to, Roland, is that there's 
communication styles that are different between black and white and sometimes is also body language. Now, the president does owe this whole family an apology, but I don't think he can pull it off. Here's what we have. You know, blacks and whites have different body language. White people will stand three inches in front of your face, and that's their comfort zone. Black people stand George, side George, to side. George, 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 George. I'm just George, saying, there's a difference George, in communication. George, George, in body Mr. George, Mr. is the president George. of the country. He needs to it, learn it, it, this. George, George, is better with it. George yeah. no, one second, one second, <laughs> one second. George, yes. this has nothing to do with body language. It has to this do simply with communication has to do with style. No, no George, the this has to do with lot. No, no, years old. George, He's not George, a George. We know what we got. He knows what he got. George, lying, George, lying is not body language. Lying is lying. Yeah. And so here you have Maisha Johnson, the widow, who says the pain was even more intense. She said the president couldn't remember her husband's name. She said she cried more after that. This man, how hard is it to say, you know what? Pick the phone up and say, Mrs. Johnson, if, I'm, if I made you cry even further, my apologies, but he won't do it. Why can't John Kelly say, you know what, Congresswoman Wilson? I stand corrected. You did praise those praise those FBI agents, and my assessment was incorrect. They are lying, George. Not body language, lying. There's a communication difference between blacks and whites that we have to know. <laughs> but let me say this. Okay. I have I have a friend. I have a close friend who I lost to domestic violence a few weeks ago. Her her father's my best friend, and I still have difficulty having a conversation with him. I love him to death. He's my best friend, Tony, but. When you're dealing with communication in, in this situation, it's just one of the tough things that you Roman. cannot, you cannot George, okay. you're acting perfectly. like he doesn't right. have a staff. I got you. He doesn't have, he doesn't, he doesn't, have he doesn't operate by himself, George. George. He doesn't have, you he know doesn't he has a skill. staff. He doesn't the have White House is not us, just one person. He has an entire staff. Oh, well, both he can't talk. A great economy. Both cannot no, talk. George. He, he Tiffany, make your point. Tiffany, George, 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 you've made your point. Tiffany, make your point, and I gotta go to a break. George, really quickly, you are acting like this man works by himself and does not have help. He has a staff, he operates on his own. He is, it is not about body language or him not being able to communicate. He has staff that are supposed to support him and walk him through this, and by denying that and ignoring that, you are also becoming a liar. White people I'm and black people not having the same body language or the same language is ridiculous. No, we have the same language. Right, we don't have so a great one same communication it is, style. It is not days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.